Well, we got a new shop dog. His name is Huey Calloway, and he's a little bit of a monster. If any of y'all are familiar with Blue Healers, this is my first one personally. Um, if y'all been following me a long time on Instagram, you've probably met or seen pictures of Zip, who was our old healer. It was actually my wife's dog, and then whenever we got together and uh, started dating and stuff, that dog and I really connected, and he kind of became my dog more. Uh, he came to the shop quite a bit, was on a few of the videos and stuff. He was an old man, and unfortunately, he passed away this year, um, earlier back in the spring, and so, well, we've kind of been looking, but not looking, and uh, we kind of ran across these, and, and it ended up happening a good friend of ours let us know about them and um so we ended up getting one and so he is now the official shop dog and he's already tearing stuff up and so but that's okay he's a puppy he's already chewed on a couple stirrups and stuff so we got to keep an eye on him about that but other than that he's learning that if the leather's on the floor he can have it if it's attached to something he cannot that'll take him a while to learn but he's a cool dog but his name is huey calloway i got that name from the movie good old boys with tommy lee jones and that's the character that Tommy Lee Jones plays is Huey Calloway. And the last dog that we had was uh, the last shop dog, of like real shop dog that was in the in the uh, big store a lot and stuff. Some of my older customers will remember him. He was His name was Bill, and he was a big border collie. And in that same movie, there's a border collie in there named Bill that causes a, uh, a wagon wreck. And so that's a pretty good... That's a pretty funny part in that in that movie, and so we ended up naming, it was my brother's dog, but he worked with me in the shop at that time, and so he named that dog Bill, and so Bill was always in the shop. He'd play fetch with customers and uh, chewed up a bunch of scrap leather and all that kind of stuff. He was a character, but he passed away a few years ago. He, like I said, he was, he was getting pretty old as well. Um, it's unfortunate they don't live very long compared to us, you know, 15, 15 years or so is about average on most dogs, and so it's kind of kind of sucky but we're excited about about Huey here and uh he's a little bit of a turd but we're gonna put him down so he can play Woo! wow crazy week <whistles> this week has been nuts it's been a crazy week um the last Monday morning video uh so much more was uncertain and now a week later after the election so much more is uncertain Seems like, but he would quit. You need to quit chewing on that. We're at the chewing stage. He likes to chew on a lot of wood. Um, there's some furniture out there I don't want him chewing on, namely the deer mount, pedestal mount. Caught him trying to chew on that once. Um, been doing good with the accidents. Haven't had too many accidents in the shop. He's actually pretty good. Um, as long as you take him out pretty frequently, and he'll actually kind of cry already, let you know he needs to go out. But that just might be the breed. I know everybody's got their favorite breed, but um, I never was a healer fan at all in my life. Everyone I met, I didn't get along with. But when I met Zip, it was it was kind of a, a perfect match. Like we got along really good. But he was kind of lazy and didn't care, and was kind of a jerk. But um, I kind of liked that about him. He was pretty funny. But this one, he seems to be okay. They're really smart. I don't know. We'll see. I'm kind of dumb, so I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to train this dog. But good thing I got my wife. She's really good with animals. Last week, we got a lot of stuff done. I, got, I did get some of the repairs done. I'll show you some of those. Um, they're not really that extravagant. Uh, the one turned out really nice. I think it looks a lot better than it did when it came in, mainly because of neglect. It just wasn't maintained and old and taken care of, but um, I think we saved it some. Huey, would you stop eating the wood? Stop eating the wood. But we ended up getting those done, and we got some saddles. I got one saddle pretty well done. I just got to do the flank girt and the breast collar and some billets, but I'll show you that in a minute as well. Got some belts put together. We're gonna go into cut today. I was gonna cut this weekend, but I ended up kind of working on saddles. I got seat uh, seat put in that other saddle, so we can wrap that one up this week as well, and a bunch of little parts to try to get that going. We did get some Herman Oak leather in. I've got something cool coming with that Herman Oak leather that you're gonna wanna hear about. So if you're not on the Leathercraft newsletter, be sure and go sign up for that at dgsaddlery.com. Um, but I think you're gonna like it. We're gonna try something and uh, see what happens. Uh, but we got a little bit of extra leather in for that purpose. Podcast is going good. 
We This week, uh, the episode was Wilson Capron. Had an interesting conversation with him. In that episode, he does dive into a little bit about the TCA, which is a traditional cowboy art association. That association, you know, it, it's a really interesting deal. They're, the craftsmen that are on there are really, really talented. It is a small group. It is very hard to get in there. Um, and But it's interesting to see the things that they do. They have one big show a year that they seem to spend. They probably spend maybe a a third of the year working on projects for that show um which would be interesting they kind of get to do what they want and set their own budget build something that's just off the charts cool and uh, costs a lot of money so that's pretty neat but you get to hear a little bit of his of his perspective on that and then and then also his perspective on business and how he does things not the not the way every craftsman works on this podcast is going to be in line with what you or i may do um and, and other craftsmen it's But that's the point of it is to hear somebody else's perspective because he's working in a different – his business model is really different from what mine would be or yours would be or somebody else's might be. And so it's just cool to hear their perspective. Um, We can listen to it and take take from it what helps us and then move on and and do what what works for us. And that's mainly what you've got to do anytime you're running a business is do what works for you. Um, I do like his pricing strategy to an extent of – keeping track of time he it seems like he's keeping track of billable hours you know i'm not putting words in his mouth just kind of going off of what we talked about he's kind of like trying to bill out certain amount of hours a week um whereas you know i work a little bit differently and a lot of other people do so it was just kind of interesting to see that that perspective and that take on that um this week's podcast i think will be pretty interesting um, we've got a bunch of people scheduled. I've had a bunch of people email me and say, hey, you need to check out so-and-so, check out so-and-so. We're writing all those down and making a list. I think I've got my list full for the rest of the year. We don't have that many weeks left. Um, as you're fully aware, Christmas is right around the corner. We're already in November, well into it. And so um, I've, I've probably got everybody scheduled for the most part um, for the rest of the year. But then we've got all of next year as well. So keep sending those. If you've got somebody that I might not know about that you'd like to have me do a podcast of let me know we're kind of on that one once a week kind of roll right now there may be some weeks where we do two episodes if i've got them uh in the pipeline already edited and ready to upload because there's no reason for them to sit on my computer if we can get an extra one out um a, a week here and there we'll do two but for the most part we're going to do an episode a week um, i don't have a set date on when that post just keep checking your feed and you can also go to the website LostTradePodcast.com. There's also a button on DG Saddlery to say Lost Trade Podcast. You can click that and go there. And the actual website for the podcast has a little player. So if you're not doing the Apple thing or you don't want to mess with Spotify, I completely understand. We're trying to keep this low tech as possible so that everybody can listen to it. Some people just have a computer in their in their shops and they don't really have a um, an iPhone or something like that that they can listen to a podcast. So this is real easy. Go to the website click on play it'll play it so if you got some speakers run through your shop you'll be able to hear a lot better than off the computer speaker real quick little update on the shirts we are doing a second run just trying to get all that all that lined out the biggest deal on those shirts is that the company i was told this week by the guy that's doing the shirts for us that the company that makes that particular shirt not the printer not him he's the printer but the the people that actually manufacture that t-shirt which we really like um, they're based out of California, and they have had a really hard time with the coronavirus and some shutdowns. Obviously, California shut everything down over there, um, and so they've had they've had some issues with trying to just keep it keep the inventory up because they have been shut down here and there. And so that's the problem with the inventory as far as us being able to get the shirts. So that's why we didn't allow back orders on these because we were already dealing with that on the organic leather t-shirts, and I didn't want to have to do that and have y'all waiting for this shirt because I knew this shirt would be popular. And it was. Thank you, everybody. I think we've got three left. That's all we've got. Um, Everything on the website, I think, is pretty well out of stock. But we are going to get some more made. If I change the brand of the T-shirt to kind of fix the problem with the supply of this shirt until they get kind of caught back up because they're pretty well behind, um, then I will let you know that. We will explain that. We'll show. we'll We'll reshoot the pictures of them so you'll know exactly what shirt they are. But for those of you that have gotten the shirts, I want to thank you. And um, it seems like those shirts are really popular. They fit good. They uh, hold up well. And so that's what we want. If we do more and more products like that in the future, we always want to make sure that we're doing a a good quality product. Since we're not making the shirt, we want to hunt for the best ones. And those we've really enjoyed. We've used them for uh, a couple of years now. And those shirts are really good. But right now we're just having a problem getting them. And so we might have to 
transition to somebody else for the moment until they come back. That logo we may put on other things as well. We've got some other ideas where we may could use that. We're also going to be working on some that just have our Maker Stamp logo on there. And so we'll let you know when those become available. Um, I really appreciate everybody's support and it seems like y'all really enjoy the merch and the caps and the shirts and that kind of thing um, to go along with our patterns and stuff like that. So we really appreciate the support on that. Shop's really quiet this morning. I don't know what's going on. I guess it's just because it's kind of foggy and there's no wind and um, it's really still. It's just kind of weird. Uh, perfect night though. We had a calf last night. I got up this morning to take little Huey out here and so he could go do his business and uh, a cow that we knew that was gonna calf she had a little little black spot across the across the pasture way I could see a little black spot I thought well it's either a cow bush or it's a calf so we were pretty certain she was gonna have it yesterday she was actually due last week so but my wife confirmed this morning that we had a bull calf so that was slightly disappointing really wanted to have her but we got a little bull calf, so he's healthy, he's happy, mama's doing good. So <clears throat> we've only got three cows. We don't have a big herd. We're starting a little show herd for the kids. And so we've got two older cows and one first year heifer that's going to calf in January. Just the way it happened, because we bought these two cows from my wife's boss. And so when he got them AI'd and stuff, they're gonna calf one this month, one next month. And then our first year heifer, we couldn't get her bred until a certain time. And so that put her calving in January. So one november one december one january so hopefully this next year we can tighten that up just a little bit those of you that raise a lot of cattle much more than i'm getting into because like i said i know nothing about cows other than making things out of them y'all probably understand getting them more in line to where you're having a, a season where you're not having calves throughout the entire year and so you know it's it's kind of fun it's kind of neat so we're going to try to get them where we, maybe we have them all in within a month or two maybe six weeks and uh I'm learning a lot. It's a lot of fun. I'm glad I didn't have to pull this calf. I've worked for vets uh, all the way through college and stuff like that because that's what I was trying to do was go to, go to vet school. And so I've helped pull a bunch of calves, but and I was glad this one just went easy. But it worked out good. And so now we've got a baby calf on the ground, so that'll be neat. To Kids are all excited. All right, once again, I have to disappoint you. Checkbook cover still are not done, but we got a lot of other stuff done last week. So I'm doing my best to stay as consistent and keep these things rolling as fast as possible. I am going to make it my mission to get these done this week for you and get the video up. And that way you've got a pattern and you can start making these for Christmas. Some of y'all have already messaged me and said you actually have a couple orders for these. I'm going to warn you, like I said, the construction part of this is not really hard. But the tooling patterns may be helpful for you. But I'll have all of it. It'll be a normal pattern pack that we do. Checkbook covers, we're going to get those out this week and uh, i got these two tooled and dyed i did this one it's kind of a two-tone but i didn't do the background black and the reason i didn't was because the brand i did our brand in black and so i didn't want it to disappear um so we just did just the border i think it's gonna look pretty neat and this one i did two-tone brown um and so we'll get to putting those together get these antique get to putting those together hopefully like i said late week end of week that video will be posted and project video we are working on some more tip videos and stuff as well just to show you all some some new little tips that i found and, and tricks and stuff on uh, a few little situations that you might find handy let me get some coffee and we'll talk about saddles all right this is one of the repairs that we were working on um, we did new stirrup leathers the saddle's got complete new stirrup leathers and blevins buckles in there i've got hobble straps made for it right here and so we'll put those on and it'll be ready to ready to rock and roll. Got new rear billets. They were pretty in pretty bad shape. They were pretty dry. I did new strings, new rosettes. We just did double rosettes and strings on this saddle, and a new Latigo tie strap. It's been cleaned. It's been oiled. Been conditioned. This saddle was very dry, and unfortunately, some people don't oil regularly. Um, I'm bad about it as well, and so it's a very common thing, but. That's what causes a lot of this misshapenness in the leather and curling skirts and all that stuff. If people would maintain a little bit better, this stuff wouldn't look as bad and, and off kilter. But um, it is what it is. They're using saddles that are made to made to put through through the ringer as far as work goes, and so a lot of times they don't get the nourishment that they need. But we go back in and we can't reverse dry rot. So this saddle is not dry rot. It's getting you know it was getting kind of close on some some areas, but you can't reverse dry rot, but what you can do is stop it. 
So if a saddle is so dry rot that when you bend the leather it cracks and breaks, there's nothing you can do for that. Um, there is no stopping it, it's dead. It's, there's no coming back from it. A saddle like this, where the leather's still, still flexible, it's good quality Herman Oak, it's still flexible, there's nothing wrong with it, it's not dry and hard, uh, it's dry, but it's not like hard and dry rotted and everything. That we can stop that degradation, and so we do that with the oil and with conditioners, but we can't back it up. We can't bring it back to brand new leather, make it look, you know, just perfect and everything like, like new leather. So that's just something to keep in mind if you do have customers that um, don't don't normally take a lot of time to oil their stuff. I would kind of try to educate them best as possible, but you know it cuts down on the repairs, it cuts down on the um, the, the breakage on certain items, mainly the small items and stuff. And uh, it's just to spill some oil on it occasionally, even if it's vegetable oil. I don't care, just something. Just wipe it down, spray it down with Pam if you want. It just something. Do something other than just nothing because. Uh, leather has to be fed and they really really will last a lot longer if they're maintained and it's just you know everybody gets busy we all you know a lot of tools that you have you just use them and abuse them and replace them when they get to that point but um but all in all i think the saddle's still in good shape you know it's a it's a war hero it's been out there it's been used and been through a lot of stuff so now hopefully it's still got many years left in it but we went through and did what we could for it this weekend I got the seat put in this ranch saddle and so it's been it's dry enough now where now I can come in here and do my final lines that's just how I like to do it some guys will do their final lines pull the seat in one time and they're done I prefer to pull it in kind of blocked in like this it's just real wild cut and then I'll come in now that it's dry and everything's seated where it's going to go I'll come in here and draw my, draw my final lines so that they're where I want them and so that's what I'm going to do I'll do that sometime today or tomorrow and we'll get this saddle It'll be ready to roll. The seat's the last thing to go in it. And I've already got fenders made, um, all the little stuff. It's, it'll be it'll be ready to rock and roll. So we're gonna get that one done. The rope and saddle is completed. The actual saddle itself, the stirrups are done. Um, I've got billets put together, or about to be put together. I've just gotta do that. And then these little Ds here, I put a clipping D under each concho. This guy had some custom conchos that came off another saddle that we had built him that we sold and we saved the conchos so Claudia polished those up and then we put those in this saddle but he wanted string so what we do there is we do a clip and D. We get these from Weaver. They're just a, a little clip and D and then we'll attach our saddle string to that. It's got a really cool look. It makes it really neat too because if you need a piece of leather to patch something, not so much on a rope and saddle you're in an arena but if you were building a ranch saddle and you did this and a guy's way out in the middle of nowhere and needs to patch a stirrup fender or needs to patch something or heck tie a gate shut or whatever you can actually take that string off and use it and then to replace it we're not having to tear the saddle apart to replace it so it is kind of a kind of a neat deal but most of the time i prefer the strings to just go go to the tree and not on these clipping d's but but it is a good option if you've got custom conchos and still want saddle strings you can certainly do that so we got these two saddles done. This one, this one here is a Jay Nordley. It's a really neat uh, roping saddle. He builds a lot of a lot of roping saddles and stuff. He's real popular uh, down this way. We, all we did here was just put a latigo on it, and uh, and then some hobble straps is all that all of this saddle needed. And that's pretty much all I've ever found a, a Nordley needs. Really, they hold up really well. Now this saddle, somebody asked in one of the. Instagram deals maybe or maybe my story they asked if this was a Benton Moore. Yes, it's a Benton Moore saddle. He passed away. I, I don't remember when but he's since passed away but he built a lot of roping saddles and they're real popular down in this area. But this was the one. It's a tripping saddle and it's a very very short kennel. I think I measured it like two inches maybe. Maybe not even that. Maybe inch and a half. Something there. Somewhere around there. We got it covered. It was not as difficult as I thought it was going to be. Uh, putting it on actually went on really well. <clears throat> if you watched my stories, you saw how much space taking the housing off gave me, which wasn't much. So it didn't look like I had much more room to work than it does right now. But putting the binder on went on really, really well, actually. Once it was dry, I came back to sew it. That went really well. A uh, little bit aggravating because you, you got to really get under there to see where you're at. I did sew this with a hook all. Um, and so, but I sew all my binders with a hook all. And so that way I'm doing a lock stitch. It's quicker for me. I don't stitch my candles with two needles. Uh, I don't find that there's any 
added value to putting myself through that. And so sewing them um, with a hook all is just fine for me, so that's what I do. Uh, but then trimming this thing was the worst part. That was hard because I couldn't, my trim, I have one of those horseshoe brand can oak trimmers, binder trimmers, and it uh, looks like a little mini uh, French edger. And that thing works really good on every other tree, but on this one, there just wasn't enough room with these skirts on here. I, I couldn't get the tool in there. I was able to get it in there like up high, but anywhere else, I, I, it, I couldn't get it in there. So what I did was I just took my knife, I taped off every bit of my blade except for just my trim knife. I took, I taped off every part of that blade except for about that much on the tip so that I could get in there without cutting the outside of my binder here and uh, that tape just protects the blade from cutting that binder and I was able to get in there and trim. If you get your eyeball up underneath there, and uh, which is really hard, especially with the housings on there now, but when that was off, if you looked at it, it's by far not the prettiest trim job I've ever done as far as trimming off the excess binder underneath here. But it, I think all in all, it turned out good. I mean, I, can't, I can only trim as much as I can trim. Um, and uh, all in all, I think I got, I think I got it trimmed out pretty good. But that was the hardest part was just trimming it. It wasn't even putting it on or sewing it. But if you do have one of these to do, just know that the trimming is going to be the worst part. Don't be scared of putting it on and sewing it. Well, at least for this, for me, it wasn't that bad on this one. It wasn't too bad. So we got that on there. Uh, this project this week, I'm going to cut these uh, panels out for this deer mount and uh, hopefully get that going at some point. That's just a fun project, but I want to get it going because it's really talking to me every day when I come in here I want I want to see those panels tooled on there I think it's gonna look really neat what are you doing Huey? Turd. one thing we did last week too is we finished up all the rough out belts and so we got us starting to get a little belt rack kind of full again we used to have this in our big store it was always had a bunch of belts on there and We'd build one just to try it, kind of like I did with the vintage fade belt, and just do that and then hang it up there. And eventually, somebody will come in that likes it that's the right size for it, or at least order one. But it gives people something to look at. And uh, as far as the rough out belts, we will post those. We'll probably start keeping these on the website because um, they do sell pretty good. But we've got some different sizes here. I've got to figure out what sizes I did and price them and all that stuff. But we do have quite a few rough out belts and we'll probably cut out some more and, and keep those stocked up. Here's my breast collar. I got it scabbed and folded um, this weekend before I went home. It's one thing I like to do on these breast collars. Breast collars, and it, it depending on maybe the way your pattern or your flank girt might be, but mainly just breast collars. My flank girt, we sew it up flat and then install the buckles. It's pretty simple. But on the breast collars, it seems to me to be better to go ahead and scythe this, get it folded, um, and let it dry and then come back. I've already edged, slicked, I've already slicked the edges of this area here where it goes around the D's. And then today I can come in here, just add some dye and then start putting this thing together. It goes together really fast. And then all I've got to do is sand and slick the main portions here, dye those and it goes together pretty, pretty fast. That's all I really got for you this week. It's going to be a good week. Everybody chin up, smile, let's get it done. Uh, we're getting into Christmas season. Now that the election is behind us somewhat, uh, we can move forward now. We were already seeing an increase of people calling, asking for Christmas orders, that kind of stuff. My books may be closed by now. I don't know. Uh, Claudia and I need to go through that sometime today and really look at it because we've kind of been taking orders and doing things. And uh, I do that every year and I'm going to get blinded by about Thanksgiving and go, oh, no, we might have taken a little too much. So we've already talked about that last week don't want to overdo that so we're going to do that today and kind of assess where we're at i think we'll be fine we've got a couple cow shows for my little girl i think one this weekend and one in december and so those are some you know as we get into christmas season i usually work every day which i'm usually in here every day even this weekend i was working at the house but i came in for part of the day just to work on stuff mainly because i enjoy it this is what i do uh so i'm always trying to stay ahead of the game here and come up with new things for y'all and do that so we're just gonna hammer it just keep going just keep working this week will be be good um i did see a couple of y'all comment or message me and say man i've never thought about cutting out an entire week's worth of stuff just cut out what i can do that week and doing that ahead of time is just taking two or three hours and just cutting everything 
but I did that this week and it really, really helped me. I got a couple uh, messages on Friday about that. <clears throat> That's awesome. Um, it does help. It's hard to do sometimes for me because I've got, I get on this saddle or I get on making videos or I get on this, I get on that. And so I'm, usually it's like by the time I find out something's due, I've got to just kind of make that one project. But I'm getting back into that groove where like today I'm going to sit down and pull out, okay, I can finish this many jobs this week. So I'm going to cut out those jobs. I'm not going to cut out all my jobs because then you're just tying up leather and there's a chance for it to get ruined, especially on belts. If you cut out if you had 13 belts to build and you cut all 13 of them out and it takes you four weeks to get 13 of them done, that's that those last belts, that's 14 or four weeks that those belt blanks are laying around your shop and there's a chance you're gonna get something spilled on them, something stained, something like that. That leather's better off on your rack where it's safe. And so I don't recommend just cutting out like something crazy, like a year's worth of product. Like just cut out what you can get done within seven to 10 days. And that way you've got all the pieces you need but you're not you know you're not tying up as much leather because also too at the end of the day all that really matters is what you're getting paid for and what you're getting paid for is what's finished so you've got to complete jobs not start jobs um, that's that's the biggest thing i had to fight and i still have to fight because i'm a big i like starting a job and having a bunch of them going but the ones that are finished are the only ones that count the ones that are started or mid process they don't count because they're not going to make you any money you've got to complete something in order for that transaction to be finished so I would recommend that, you know, pick you out four or five jobs, depending on how much you work in your shop. If you're full-time, you know, pick you out five or six jobs you can finish this week. Cut all everything you need for those and have it ready to go. Make sure your hardware is there and all that stuff. And then the cool thing is if you can get to a point where you do that a week ahead of time, so maybe this week you're cutting next week's stuff and then put it in a box, it's already over there. Then you might find out, oh, I'm out of white buck stitch lace that I'm going to need for that one. I've got a week. I can order that, and it'll be here in time. So it's just kind of a good little business move to keep you ahead of yourself because I really hate running out of stuff and or going to finish the job and finding out I'm out of a certain buckle and now I can't finish it and it's that's all I'm really lacking to finish the job because then you got to order it and wait. So anything like that just helps. I'm really happy that somebody tried that that deal out. Um, it seems simple and you know one one guy was like, man, I I don't know why I never thought about that. You know, it's like I, the same reason I don't. It, you just get busy, you get to doing your deal and. And those simple little tweaks like that are things that I have to remind myself of a lot because that's the kind of stuff we used to do in the big shop. You know, we'd, we'd, we'd try to put those little processes in that made things easier on everybody. So give that a shot. I don't have a whole lot left to talk about this week. Uh, I hope everybody's doing good. If you haven't already, be sure and subscribe to this channel. Um, I know a lot of people, we've, we've seen a lot more people watching the videos and all that stuff. If, if you like them and you want to see more of them, please hit that subscribe button. And also, if you want more resources for leather work, we also have a blog where we write some articles. There's some really good information in there. Um, there's also our podcast. The, the blog and stuff is at dgsaddlery.com. You can also find our podcast there, uh, Lost Trade Podcast. And, uh, and we'll have a good episode coming out this week. I think everybody will enjoy it. But I appreciate y'all watching, and if you need anything, let us know. Otherwise, we'll see you next Monday.